Tithing is a biblical principle that allows us to trust God and to be empowered to have supernatural success. If you are not a member of a church, you can tithe to Promised Land Church. The following are ways to give. One, through our mobile app. Two, give online at www.thepland.com. Three, mail your check, money order, or cashier's check to 3430 Overton Crossing, Memphis, Tennessee, 38127. Or lastly, four, you can call us at 901-357-0200, and we can take your payment by phone. Thank you in advance for your contributions. God bless. We would like for you to partner with us as we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. To become a Word for Your World partner, for a gift of at least $50 or more, you will receive a monthly newsletter, a copy of our quarterly magazine, one CD per month, a special prayer card. You may give by one of the following means. Through our mobile app, give online at thepland.com, mail your check, money order, or cashier's check to 3430 Overton Crossing, Memphis, Tennessee, 38127. You may also call us at 901-357-0200, and we can take your payment by phone. Thank you in advance for your contribution. It was cause I had a whole bunch of aunts, and then I hang around, hung around my aunt, sister, and my mama all the time. So what you see, but when he saw I had been hanging around him a little too long, he said, no, 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 you come in here with me. Let's go to the barber shop. I wish I had a witness here. And, and it used to be a time when you, when you had an uh, earring and I, you know, you, you, I wanted, you know, I thought it was so cool to put an earring in your left ear. You know, they used to say you was cool if you had an earring in your left ear. And then all of a sudden around the 90s, they start, men start putting earring in both their ears. And I was confused. I, I never had an earring, never desired, never wanted one, but I thought it was cool in the left ear. But then I saw them put it in both ears, and you know it was said if you had one in your left ear, you was cool. And it was said if you put one in your right ear as a man, you was a sissy. So now, I guess now, they walking around with them in both ears. They just a bunch of cool sissies. Oh, I just messed up about five of y'all. But you've got to understand, as a man, you've got to be a man. We got territorial stronghold. And that spirit, that spirit, that sexual demon that has attached itself to you and made you think in your mindset that as a man, you ought to function as a woman. As a woman, you ought to function as a man. That is a spiritual demon that has attached itself to you. Watch this, those demonic forces that, that have attached themselves to you, territorial strongholds. And now, you know, it used to be a time, I started this off, where, you know, everything you did, it was called, you know, if you did something with the, with the same sex, you stayed in the closet. Now everything is out in the open. Now, even in our states, Men want to marry another man. I can't imagine laying down with a hard man. And then waking up with a hard man. Y'all didn't get hold of that. That's a stronghold. That's a demonic spirit that has attached itself to you. 
and made you believe that which is a lie and allowed you to think it's the truth. And let me help somebody out. Even if you feel as though that's what you are dealing with, you need to get in the word of God. You need to pray. And then you need to deny your flesh of whatever it may be craving and say, Lord, I need you to empower me with the power of the Holy Spirit. I need the anointing of God to deny myself because it's some things that I'm craving that I don't want to have take hold of my life. And in the name of Jesus, I I need you to overcome me uh, and allow me to have victory over any demon that's trying to attach itself to me. You got territorial strongholds, but then secondly, you got ideological strongholds. And what ideological strongholds are, Satan uses his force to control worldview through philosophies that influence culture and society. In other words, we've gotten to the point where our society is messed up. We have to know according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of any stronghold. In other words, it is not in myself that I believe in, but I believe in the power of God. And let me help you out. When you trust in the power of God, it's it's God's power that has the ability to overcome any demonic force that's trying to overtake you. The Bible allows us to know in verse 5 of that same verse, casting down imaginations. That term cast down means uh, I literally throw it out. When you talk about imagination, that simply means thoughts because the devil will place thoughts and suggestions in your heart and your mind to make you believe this is what you want. And perversiveness will become something that becomes a pleasure. So you've got to cast that out. Notice what it says in verse 5. Cast down thoughts. and Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought, it does not say some thoughts, it says every thought. That term thought means purpose. It says, notice what the text says, and bring it into captivity every purpose to the obedience of Christ. Uh, and that term obedience means compliance of Christ. Uh, I want to comply to the will of Christ. Uh, and whenever you comply to the will of Christ, uh, there are some things that you just can't do uh, because you're unable to do uh, because God removes the desire from you. So you got territorial strongholds, but you got ideological strongholds. But then thirdly, you have personal strongholds. Shout personal strongholds. And what personal strongholds are, they are, these are things that Satan builds to influence your personal life. In, in other words, personal sin, your, your thoughts, your feelings, your attitudes, your behavior patterns. In other words, personal strongholds are those things that overtake your mindset. What, what a personal stronghold is, it is one of those, those suggestive thoughts that Satan will give you and allow you to think that it is, when in actuality it is not. In other words, it'll start with a dream, and then from a dream it moves to a desire and from a desire it moves to you want to do it and from doing it it actually moves to a habit that has engulfed you and taken you farther than you ever wanted to go let me see if I can make that plain because when you have a personal stronghold Satan will show you something that you know you don't need and what you'll end up doing is you will go after something you don't need. In other words, he'll show you that you need to be married to so-and-so, but so-and-so is already married to somebody else. Let me see if I can help some of y'all out because it's a whole lot of y'all that you will sit up and say, yeah, he, he's supposed to be my wife. It's a whole, of you, a whole lot of you young ladies. He's supposed to be my wife, my husband. And let me help you out. If he already married, he can't be yours. He already belonged to somebody else. Well, I saw it in a dream. Well, you need to wake up and cast that out and say the devil is a lie. I ain't finna go after that woman's husband because the God that I serve has already 
it allowed me to know uh, that greater is on the way. Uh, all I got to do is stay faithful to him, uh, and the power of God uh, will allow me to meet who it is uh, that he has for me. So, so you have personal strongholds. There, there are things that Satan builds to influence your personal life, personal sin. I'm talking to somebody right now that's watching me, and you feel as though to get ahead, you got to, you got to lie, you got to cheat, you got to steal. But if you got to lie, cheat, and steal, you acting like your father, the devil, because that's what he does. He's a murderer, and that's what his job is. He's a thief from the beginning, and you have to know that according to John 8 44 that he wants to destroy your life uh, and somebody needs to understand uh, that whenever the power of the devil has influence over your life uh, he will cause you uh, to do things uh, that he that God never meant for you to do uh, and then you will get out of God's will uh, because you will be in Satan's way uh, and I need to help about 10 of y'all in here uh, that need to understand uh, that you got to counsel the power that Satan has on you uh, and stop doing what you were doing uh, and going in the direction that God has for you to go. You got territorial strongholds. You got ideological strongholds. You got personal strongholds. And according to Cindy Jacobs, you got to have uh, a break in the yoke and stronghold prayers. You, you've got to say in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. That every stronghold the enemy has put on me is, is being broken. That Satan will no longer cause uh, me to participate in sin. Lord, I thank you that the blindness is falling off my eyes concerning this sin. And, and that the glorious light and truth of your word is being revealed in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to have a prayer that says, I've got to remove that stuff from me. Now, notice what occurs because in the confines of the context, before the context, the text becomes a pretext. The Bible has said in Daniel 3, notice that the Bible allows us to know that Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded them to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, everybody around them knew that they were holy, but you've got to understand when a person has unholy tensions for you, that they will allow that which is holy to be profane and that which is unholy will become the rule and the standard. Let me see if I can make it plain for you. Don't get mad because they don't like you because you won't go drinking with them. Don't get mad because they don't like you because you won't sleep with them. Anybody that's trying to get you to do something contrary to God's word, you don't need them in your life in the first place. And notice what the Bible says. The Bible says he brings them to him. We have launched a magazine for you and your family to enjoy. At The Land will reach 50,000 residents. We invite you to advertise with us. You can purchase full page, half page, quarter page, and banner ads. For information and pricing, please call us at 901-357-0200. Seventeen million children don't know where their next meal is coming from not overseas, but right here in our country. And they're hidden. You'd be surprised at how close to you they are. They could even be your next door neighbors and you just wouldn't know it. Why are we as a nation not able to feed our own children? For the children facing this problem daily, this is a crisis. And I agree, we should be doing something about this right now. Please be in prayer about our food pantry feeding our families. We are asking that you would help us provide needy families with food items to be able to make it through the month. If you would like more information, please contact us at our office, 901-357-0200. He asked the question in verse 14, is this true that I hear that y'all are not going to bow and serve my God that I have set up? Now, now, I'm going to give you a chance in verse 15. He says, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance to act like everybody else acts. That's literally how it transliterates in verse 15. I'm going to give you a chance to act like everybody else acts. I'm going to give you a chance to do what everybody else is doing. I'm going to give you a chance to sin like everybody else is sinning. And notice what they do. They say, you know what? In verse 16, they say, we ain't careful in this matter. 
We've already prayed and labored. We, God revealed this day was coming before it came. And we are not careful in our answer. The answer that we have in verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from a burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. Well, uh, let, me, let me see if I can do it this way. Because verses 15 to verse 18, you have to know, it's not until the music is played that they realize you can't be played. Okay, y'all ain't grab hold of it. Let me see if I can help y'all out. It's not until the music is played that they realize you can't be played. The Bible says that early on in the confines of the context from verses 13 to 15, that all you got to do when you hear the music is act like everybody else act. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says you got to understand we're not like everybody else. We've been separated. We are holy. We are peculiar. We are of a royal priesthood. We are different from everybody else. And I need to tell somebody in here that what God is looking for in this time, in this era, he's looking for some people that can be different. He's looking for some people that can be different from everybody else. Just because everybody else does what they do, that does not make it right. You got to do what God has assigned, purpose, and called you to do. And when you know what it is that God has called, has purposed, and assigned for you to do. You don't have to worry about that because God will provide everything you need to make it through. Okay, okay, here it is. Stop allowing the DJs make you dance to their music. No, 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 notice the DJ places the record on, and what the DJ does is the DJ is trying to get you to dance to his music, but you got to tell the DJ, you ain't nothing but a disc jockey. I have a maestro. Okay, y'all don't know what a maestro is. You got to tell him, though, listen, Mr. DJ, you're just a disc jockey. I have a maestro, and the Latin term for maestro, the Latin word for maestro is master. In other words, my maestro or my master is the one conducting my life. In other words, he knows my highs and lows. He knows how he's conducting my life. Matter of fact, my life is in his hands. And when I, when you and I understand that the master, the maestro has everything in control, you will understand you don't have to be concerned about the affairs of this world because God got it all in control. But, but hold on, here's something else. You can put me in the worst of situations, but I'm going to come out in the best of ways. Watch this, watch this. The Bible says they are thrown in the fiery furnace. Verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar gets mad, gets angry, and he throws them into the fiery furnace after heating it up seven times harder. But notice the Bible says in verse 21, these men were bound in their coats, their hose, their hats, their other garments, they were cast into the middle of the burning fire furnace. Notice what happens. With all that they put on them to go into the fire, they are still able to come out of the fire. Okay, y'all ain't grab hold of that. It's some folk will put some stuff on you to see how you're going to handle what it is you're getting ready to go into. But you have to have the presence of God's spirit and mindset to know regardless of what you put on me, evidently you didn't understand that I spent some time with God before you showed up. And God had already allowed me to know that you was coming. And since you're here, I'm getting ready to go into this situation. But is there anybody in here that know I ain't staying in this situation? This is only temporary. Will you look at somebody tell them this is only only temporary. This is not permanent. This is only temporary. And what you're meaning to put on me to kill me, God is going to use it to lift me. Is there anybody in here that know I'm getting ready to be lifted? You can allow yourself to think this is the end of me. You can write me out. That's fine. But is there anybody in here that know I'm getting ready to go in what you put me in? But God is going to bring me out. Now, now watch this. Watch this. They not only heated the fire hotter, but they put fuel on them, and they still didn't burn. Man, it's some folk that not only will they put you in the fire, 
they will throw gasoline on you to try and see if they can help you burn a little hotter and a little quicker. But is there anybody in here that know that when God is with you, it ain't nothing they can do to you. When God is for you, he is more than the world is against me. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. The reason you didn't burn is because you have been fireproof. Look at somebody tell them I've been fireproof. Okay. Let me tell you what fireproofing means. Uh, when firefighters want to control a fire, the first thing they do is they burn an area so that when the fire hits that area they've already burned, mm -hmm. it can't burn again. Yeah. The reason you can go in certain situations that are fiery and the fire not burn you is because God has already allowed you to go through some fires. And those fires have now fireproofed you. Look at somebody tell them I've been fireproof. The reason why you rolling your neck and you pointing your fingers and you ignoring me and you not speaking to me, the reason why you overlooking me and not giving me, the, the reason why you going to somebody that's beneath me uh, and trying to bring them above me, the reason why you doing all of that, uh, you can go ahead and have that baby because the God that I serve uh, has already fireproofed me. Uh, and whatever you bring me to, uh, God has already conditioned me uh, to make it through what I'm going through. Okay, okay, I got to get out of here. I'm done, I'm done. I got to leave you. Uh, uh, I'm finished. I'll finish this off on Sunday, but I mean on Wednesday. Let me do this. But you got to know that, that God does something uh, for these three Hebrew boys, uh, and I'll finish it Wednesday. But notice the Bible allows us to know that he brings them through this fiery situation. And when he brings them through it, the Bible says that notice what occurs in verse 23. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and notice what happens uh, verse 24 Nebuchadnezzar was astonished rose up and said did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they said oh true we did that king he answered I see four men walking in the middle of the fire and they don't have any hurt let me, let me help you out you got to understand that even though you went into the situation bound with all this stuff on you you got to go in the fire because the fire is not only going to burn some stuff off of you, it's going to also allow some folk to see Jesus in a way they've never seen him before. That's why you can't get mad and pout about going through your situation because every now and then you have to realize that all God is doing is God is allowing somebody to see Jesus walking with me. And notice the Bible says there's a fourth one and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. I'm done when I tell you that that you have to know uh, on the other side of death is life. Uh, and you don't know how to appreciate light until you've been through total darkness. Uh, and right where you are, you've got to learn how to walk around uh, your situation. Uh, notice what these three Hebrew boys do. Uh, they are walking with Jesus in the middle of the fire. Uh, I need to tell somebody in here uh, that you better walk in your situation uh, and know that Jesus has already taken care of it. Uh, in other words, uh, you got to allow the enemy to know uh, that you are loose in your situation, uh, that he bound and tied you up in. Uh, and not only am I loose, uh, but everyone that came in it with me, uh, that was connected with me, uh, they are loose as well. Uh, in other words, it ain't just me that's going to get loose. Uh, it's some folk that went in it with me that's connected to me uh, that's about to get loose. Uh, in other words, uh, you watching television now, uh, but look at somebody and tell them, I just 
just got free uh, because the Lord has delivered me. Uh, is there anybody in here that know uh, that God is a deliverer? Uh, and since he is a deliverer, uh, I understand that I'm better because of the fire. Look at somebody tell them I'm better because of the fire. But then I'm better after the fire. And the reason I'm better after the fire is because the fire was used uh, to loose me and set me free. Uh, is there anybody here that know uh, that after the sickness, you're going to be better? Uh, after the pink slip, you're going to be better. Uh, after the breakup, you're going to be better. Uh, after the divorce, you're going to be better. Uh, I wish somebody knew it's going to be better. Uh, after death, you're going to be better. Uh, I wish somebody realized uh, that it's got to get better. Uh, shout, I'm going higher because God uh, is taking me higher. So yeah, so yeah, anybody here know uh, that had it not been for the fire, uh, I would have never realized uh, that God could bring me through it. Uh, so that's why I'm praising him. Uh, I'm praising him because uh, he brought me out. Uh, he brought me through. Uh, and then he was in it with me. Uh, so yeah. The Land Academy is cultivating first-class learning in a first-class facility for children six weeks to 12 years of age. Here we are curriculum-based and all staff is CPR First Aid certified. The Land Academy provides a safe and clean environment, hot cooked meals, transportation within a two-mile radius, before and after school care, qualified staff, and hands-on learning. For more information, please contact the Land Academy at 901-353-1277. Are you looking for extraordinary senior care assistance for your loved one? Here at Promise Cares, we are dedicated to ensuring our clients continue living independently and comfortably in their own home. Whether it's short or long-term, our experienced caregivers are available. Contact us today to schedule an appointment with no obligation at 901-357-3337. Thank you. At Promised Land Church, we have been blessed with a wonderful man of God, Pastor Elliot R. Shelton. He will be celebrating his birthday March 2nd. From the Promised Land family to you, Pastor Shelton, we wish you a happy birthday. Join us for a night of prayer on Wednesday, February 25th at 7 p.m. We are proclaiming that God will heal, deliver, and set free. No matter the situation, prayer changes things.